Exodus 13 follows one of the most famous stories of all time, the Lord's deliverance of Israel from Egypt, better known as the Passover. On the heels of God's great work, the people of Israel would do two things in response to their deliverance. First, God expected them to, verse 2, consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. They would dedicate or set apart their firstborn male children and beasts for the Lord, for his purpose. Next, they were to memorialize the event of with a yearly one-week party. This would be a feast and a celebration that would tell the story of God's planned, powerful provision to the generations that would come. It would be known as the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of Passover. This would not only remind them of God's provision, but would assure them that they could trust Him concerning future trials and future troubles. Moving on in this chapter, verses 17 and 18, tells that the Lord would immediately direct His people down the path of faith. It reads, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of land of the Philistines, although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the sea, the Red Sea. Ha! God led them into a dead end. Why would the Lord do that? To show his people that what is a dead end for us is not necessarily a dead end for God. Just as his people, we are to trust and believe that where God guides, he also provides. As we trust him and he leads us into what seems like no way out, we must remember that Jesus doesn't just know a lot of ways out. He is the way out. He is our way, the truth, and the life as we move into, as we move through, and forward facing the red seas of our life. Last, God's people are always led by him in style. We're told that as Israel took their journey, verse 21, that the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night, he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Can you imagine this scene? Not only would this confirm the Lord's presence and stir his people's faith in him, but it would show all the nations that are around the true and living God was with his people. May we memorialize the Lord's deliverance in our own lives. May we set apart all who, of who we are for the Lord's use. And finally, we must trust the Lord's leading, having his presence not only go before us, but moving in us through Christ Jesus. You are so greatly loved, so go and greatly love.